Hi, and welcome to the short presentation on the NASA-sponsored Globe Citizen Science Programme. My name is Bill Flynn, and I'm the Country Coordinator for the programme in Australia. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like to acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region where I'm located, and acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands that we're meeting on today, and pay my respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. So the Globe programme has been around for just over 25 years now, uh, and during that time, we've accumulated well over 200 million measurements, and all these measurements are available on the GLOBE database. At last count, 126 countries now registered to the program. NASA have a description of the GLOBE program. Personally, my description will be a, a really user-friendly, versatile way of getting students and the broader community, in fact, involved in local environmental uh, data collection, but also increasing their knowledge of not just the local environment, but the national and global environment as well. So the GLOBE program arguably has got three options. The GLOBE program proper. So in the GLOBE program proper, a teacher would register to the, to the program. They would complete the required uh, protocol training, online protocol training, and they can choose which of the protocols they would like to, to train in. And once they've completed that training, they're in a position then to go out and collect data with their students and upload that data to the GLOBE database. Teachers can create up to 50 student accounts so that individuals can collect data and teachers can track that, or they can just give the students one common login so that the whole group will, will contribute data to that particular login ID. Uh, the second option will be the GLOBE Observer app, and the app, as the name implies, is a mobile app for a mobile device. Not quite as much option in the Globe Observer app, but just a really nice way of getting into citizen science. And if you already are a citizen scientist, a nice way of collecting valuable data that can then be used by researchers and other citizen scientists. And finally, the learning activities on the Globe program, there are perhaps 150 or so learning activities, some directly related to the protocols uh, and some uh, standalone activities that you can use in any education setting, whether it be at home or in a classroom setting. So the, the GLOBE program is built around the four Earth spheres, and GLOBE have a fifth sphere that we call Earth as a System. And Earth as a System is a combination of uh, two or more protocols from two or more different uh, spheres. Uh, you can propose a new protocol and there's a, a obviously requirements for that protocol and it goes through a, a, a filtering process and then it has to be recommended by NASA and once it's recommended if it's appropriate for the program then it's likely to be incorporated into the program at some point. So here are a number of images that go somewhere to capturing the essence I, I suppose of the GLOBE program and we've got images here from students or young people using the GLOBE program and the GLOBE Observer app. So in the top left hand corner, we've got a group of students who are seemingly doing a macroinvertebrate survey. The center image is a quite a young group of students, so look like primary school age students, and they're doing bud burst or a green up protocol. And then in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a group of students who are being shown how to determine canopy cover, and that will be part of a land cover protocol. And then top right, we've got a student there or a young person, looks like they're doing a clouds observation using the Globe Observer app. And then in the bottom left hand corner, again, we've got a group of students and they are doing a mosquito, uh, identifying mosquito larvae, again, using the Globe Observer app, using the mosquito habitat map. So the GLOBE program's got a significant number of uh, support materials, ideas and activities, not just for teachers, but for anyone that's interested in citizen science. And you can see a measurement campaign. So GLOBE frequently run challenges or campaigns, and we'll talk about a couple of those shortly. Uh, there are data collection protocols, lots and lots of different learning activities, and quite comprehensive scientific information around the protocols and the spheres. Earth is a system. Here we can see the uh, protocol bundles that are available under the Earth as a system sphere. Uh, so things like water cycle, for example, if you're doing the water cycle, you're probably looking at precipitation protocol, atmospheric temperatures, relative humidity, etc. So the idea behind the Earth as a system is to get students to appreciate the interdependency on these spheres and these protocols. The fact that one system just does not work on its own, there is a level of independent interdependency. Students are able to submit reports. In fact, they're encouraged 
to carry out research reports. And here's a report produced by a group of senior school students uh, in Thailand. What happens is when they submitted their report, the report obviously goes through some kind of uh, assessment process, and then they're awarded badges, etc., tokens. Uh, but they're also invited to present their project at the annual virtual science symposium. Uh, and prior to uh, travel issues that we've got currently under the COVID restrictions, students were able to attend meetings. And certainly the Asia Pacific region encouraged students to attend the, the annual regional meeting and present their research projects to the uh, GLOBE members. So I mentioned the GLOBE Observer app previously. So the GLOBE Observer app really is a great, not only introduction to citizen science, because it, it's a valuable tool for, ex, for people who are uh, experienced citizen scientists, but it means that you can contribute valuable data. So setting up the app is pretty straightforward. You just download the app as you would with any mobile device app and create an account. All you're required to re to create an account is an email address. And the person that sets up the account then becomes the administrator of that account. At the time that they set up the account, they've got two options. One is to create a team that we refer to as being an open team. And what that means is that anyone that comes across that team could actually submit data to that team. So if you set up a team and you're collecting mosquito habitat, then anyone else around the country can, if they come across your team and they're interested in mosquito habitats, they can upload data to your team registration. The other alternative will be to set up a closed team. And in a closed team, the administrator is given a referral code when they set up the team. And by passing on that referral code to prospective members, all that member would then, all that prospective member would need is a uh, email address and they can use their email address and the referral code to join the team. Select the protocol that you're going to record in, and you don't need to, you can do this individually if you like, you don't need to do it as a team. Follow the sequential instructions for collecting data for that protocol, select a new observation and upload your data. It's as simple as that really. So I just thought we'd look at, because we, we were talking about a United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So here's just a, some details from a paper that's been approved for publication into GeoHealth, and it's around use of the mosquito habitat mapper. So you can see in the first three years of the setting up the, 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 app, the mosquito habitat map app, we've now had something like 24,000, probably more than that now, 24,000 data observations, over 74 countries. And again, it identifies the fact that the mosquito habitat mapper and the Globe Observer app is open to a broad range of, of skill levels and ages. Because of the, uh, the ability to now to identify the, the larvae, then it, it, it allows for taxon identification, which is useful for researchers that are looking at, uh, you know, mosquito habitats. And in particular, NASA are looking at developing AI and using s satellite images to try and preempt to predict when there may be vector-borne disease outbreak. One of the ways that the GLOBE team encourage citizen scientists if you like to increase the data that's being collected is to have these frequent challenges. So in this case, the mosquito habitat photo challenge was a, a challenge that was uh, run from the 25th of July to August the 25th this year with the intention that, you know, we'd have that sort of intensive period where citizen scientists will go out and collect images of mosquito habitat, identify the mosquito larvae and include some land cover photographs. Uh, and the intention then will be that NASA would use these images supplied by citizen scientists along with satellite images to develop this AI platform that would then predict a potential outbreak of vector-borne diseases. Not only do they run these challenges, but they also have lots of other, if you like, supplementary things happening in the background. And one of the uh, really nice, I suppose, initiatives through the Mosquito Photo Challenge was to run this portal where uh, anyone that, what, that's inter that was interested in that particular challenge could see what the data that was being collected and accumulated over that time. You could actually go back further than that, but in this particular case, we're just showing you in the challenge. So you can see clearly, you know, a thousand mosquito observations, close to 500 photographs. You know, this, this information is really valuable for NASA scientists so that they can actually develop that, that uh, AI platform. And again, you know, when they have these challenges, they 
a lot of work happens in the background and a lot of support materials produced as well. So in this particular case, you can see these two resources and there's quite a number of resources that were developed around the mosquito habitat photo challenge. But these are in particular aimed at education establishment. So we've got some nice, if you like, learning activities, some ideas, uh, a little bit of background about how mosquitoes actually collect blood, which sounds a bit gory, but uh, I'm sure most students or, and young people will be interested in seeing that. So some really nice material and they actually produce a science, uh, a, a log, so a log book so you can keep your uh, science information that you've collected during the challenge and beyond the challenge as well. So again, we talked about, you know, the UN sustainable goals. So certainly health and healthy living, the mosquito habitat challenge and air quality would fit nicely into those United Nations development goals. And here we've got a really, you, it really simple to use, but quite effective uh, air quality sampling for particulates. So in this particular case, we're using materials that you could get from any stationers, just a clear plastic film that's adhesive on one side, cardboard and a template that is available through the GLOBE website. And here we've got, I suppose, almost a tick list for the students to complete. And some nice, so that relatively straightforward maths, in this particular case, relatively straightforward maths activities, because this this activity, as you can see, where it, we've got the level comment at the bottom, is aimed at primary school students. So here in Australia, we, we're probably talking year four to year six, uh, this will be an ideal activity for them to perform. And again, with particulates, we, it, obviously here we're talking about visible particulates. We're not talking about microscopic particulates. So I mentioned the GLOBE Sustainable Development Goals. And this is the kind of thing that the GLOBE team uh, have put together. So the GLOBE Development Team continually look at the GLOBE program, you know, reviewing the protocols and the spheres. And uh, of late, probably last few years, the team have become mindful of uh, certainly in schools and other education establishments, the desire to incorporate the UN Sustainable Development Goals in the education programs. So this is an ongoing process. So in this particular case, you can see just four of the UN Development Goals have been mapped against, or the programs have been mapped against the Development Goals, particular spheres and particular uh, protocols that could be used to complement teaching of the UN Sustainable Goals in a, in a, in a classroom. Nice to see GLOBE getting some recognition for the hard work that the GLOBE development team put in and obviously the people that contribute, the citizen scientists. So in 2021, this year, the American Geophysical Union uh, awarded the, the, pro, the GLOBE program Excellence in Earth and Space Science Education Award. And this award is given to an individual, a group or a team demonstrating a sustained commitment to excellence in geophysical education. The What's Up in the Atmosphere book that's available on the Elementary Globe section on the Globe webpage. Uh, this Batten Authors Award for K-12 is Batten was a Professor of Meteorology and Associate Director of the Institute of Atmospheric Physics in the US. And this award is presented to authors of outstanding learning materials or a book published within the last three years that fosters the understanding of atmospheric and related sciences in K-12 audiences. So two nice awards, recent awards there. And finally, I suppose, what, you know, why would you, as a citizen scientist or an educator, why would you use the GLOBE program? And the, these are just my thoughts. You know, it, it obviously increases education, advances environmental awareness. If you've got, you know, whether it be adults or young people out there collecting data from their local environment, contributes to scientific understanding, particularly if you're going to use something like Earth as a system that, as I mentioned earlier, shows that interconnection between the spheres and the protocols. And because it's very cross-curricular, again, if you're in a teaching environment, you know, it's incorporating science, mathematics, uh, there's some technology, if you're going out there using digital technology, etc. It's very experiential. You know, the students collect the data, the students upload the data, and it's real world. You know, they collect their data, they upload their data, they can see the data then on the GLOBE Visualize system. And if you look at some of the uh, videos that have been produced by the GLOBE team and NASA scientists, they'll tell you that they use some of that data. I mean, things like clouds observation, you know, they'll tell you that they use the clouds observation from the ground to ground to some of the satellite images they get. So in essence, versatile, valuable and useful uh, and available to anyone of any age, 365 days a year, you know, you don't, you're not restricted, 
you can go anywhere and can use the GLOBE program, particularly the GLOBE Observer app. Thank you for listening and watching this presentation.